This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. In this video, we are going to discuss uh, server-side tagging and uh, Facebook CAPI, which is a short form for Facebook Conversion API. My name is Sanmeet Singh Walia, founder at uh, DataVinci Analytics Agency. At the time of creation of this video, we are a small team of 40 analytics ninjas. I am creating these videos to generate awareness about our agency and seeking potential business opportunities. Can't get more honest than that. Having said that, let's start all right so challenges with uh, facebook pixel and the need for facebook conversion api or the need for server-side tagging in general so we know that ad blockers cookie blockers uh, all the releases of ios around privacy and tracking uh, after ios 14 these things have affected the way the pixel can work and uh, how it is it is able to track and identify people okay so let's understand first of all to clearly get the concept of how the marketing pixel works all right so let's say you have a website in our case it's davinci.services right and everything that all the components that are there on davinci.services are mostly hosted on the servers of davinci.services right so whatever requests are being made to davinci.services server so they would be not blocked by or ad blocker or cookie blocker or anything like that because you are on this website so you need the components from this particular server right then you have a pixel in this case it's a facebook pixel and the pixel if you look at the code for the pixel the data for the pixel is linked to the server of the marketing platforms uh, for which you have hosted the pixel on your website so this data is being sent to the website server while this data is being sent to the platforms uh, the marketing platform right so this pixel sends the data to the marketing platform and in return the marketing platform sends a response back when this particular image pixel is uh, requested and through uh, through that the the platform is able to identify the visitor like anonymously identify the visitor but when you go to the marketing platform they know that this is the person who was there on this particular website okay now using this information what what is the marketing info uh, the marketing platform able to achieve so by identifying the visitor by dropping this cookie by identifying what you are doing tracking what you're doing on the website the marketing pixel is able to do uh, ROAS tracking return on ad spend tracking they are able to do remarketing they are able to do lookalike audiences and by tracking this data they are able to do optimization and learning all right now if you block this pixel through ad blockers or through any mechanism right that you do not allow the installation of the pixel then that would also prevent the identification of the user on the website right if there is no pixel there is no response to the marketing server there is no callback so how would the marketing server drop a cookie and how would they identify who is the visitor and obviously if you cannot identify what's happening if you cannot track what's happening on the website once the person has left the marketing platform so how would you do the ROAS tracking remarketing lookalike audience or any kind of optimization because you're not allowing the data that to to be sent to the marketing platform all right uh, so that has become a huge challenge and particularly for facebook after this uh, particular release of ios ios 14 there was a lot of uh, press release etc and it has significantly affected the way facebook was working before the release and uh, there's an article wherein facebook says that apple ios privacy change will result in 10 billion revenue hit uh, this particular year when this was announced okay so now the marketing pixel how the marketing pixel is working again just just a recap so you have a pixel on the website the pixel sends the data to the marketing server the server responds back with an identification and the data the code for the pixel creates a cookie and stores this identifier in a cookie and using which when you go back to the marketing platform the platform is able to identify what you did on the website and do certain things now let's assume that instead of this wherein the marketing pixel is sending the data to the uh, ad platform how about you send the data to the service uh, the server your own server the website server and then from that server you directly send the data to facebook or any marketing platform right now this since this is happening at the server end and the un until and unless someone can hack your server they cannot control what's happening in your server they can control in their browser in the client whatever they want to do they can install any kind of plugin they can install vpn they can install ad blocker they can install cookie blocker they can do anything that they want to do on their machine 
but if they want to do anything legally in your server without with with your permission they they need to enter the server right so whatever you do on your server the client cannot control so if you send the data from the server directly to the marketing platform then no ad blocker no vpn no cookie blocker no privacy restriction that someone is having on their own device can stop you from sending the data to the marketing platform okay now this concept is nothing but server side tagging where instead of sending the data from the client the browser to the marketing platform through a marketing through a through a pixel you are sending the data from the server to the marketing platform okay so that's just nothing but server side tagging and in case of facebook this is called facebook conversion api or facebook capi so the server side tagging mechanism for facebook is called facebook capi okay now can facebook capi replace the pixel okay so for that we need to understand two use cases of the marketing pixel so the first use case is that you go on the marketing platform let's say you go on google.com and then google shows you an ad all right and then after clicking on or interacting with the ad you land on a website or app or any digital asset that the advertiser is trying to promote with that ad okay now for the time you are on the marketing platform the marketing platform knows what you are doing on on their platform right so they are tracking whatever you are doing because they own the platform you are on their platform but the moment you leave their platform and go on the advertiser platform the the it can be a website or an app they do not have con control over this platform right until and unless you the advertiser shares the data with them and in this case that sharing of the data is done by your marketing pixel okay so that is the first use case of the marketing pixel the second use case is that someone comes on a website they have not been to the ad platform yet but you have a marketing pixel installed and this marketing pixel sends the data to the marketing platform like let's suppose that on the website facebook pixel is installed and facebook pixel sends the data to facebook that this person has come to a website this is the identifier for that person and then since the identifier is there when this person is going to go to facebook facebook will look at the identifier at their server they will then look at the information that they have at their server which was sent from this website earlier and then they will show some ad okay now understand this thing in the first case this is happening more more or less in the same time period that is uh, you are looking at an ad you are interacting with the ad and then you are going on the website so it is happening simultaneously but in this case you can look go to the website today and then after few days as long as your cookie is there you go to facebook then still facebook has the ability or the ad platform has the ability to show you the ads because this data is already there with their server you have already sent it okay right now this case can be done by facebook capi wherein let's say someone clicks on the uh, on the ad that is there on the marketing platform right and you give some kind of click id and then this click id can be added to the landing page url and you can pass this landing page url information through the server to facebook and then facebook will know okay this was a click id that was given to this particular click that took place by this particular person and then whatever information you further pass to facebook facebook will be able to be able to stitch that information right provided that the landing url or there is some mechanism that can tell what was the activity on the marketing platform and what was the activity on the advertiser platform right if you can link these two then facebook can calculate things like return on ad spend etc but in this case right if you send the data to facebook conversion api and there is no cookie dropping so when this person who has been on your website and is coming on facebook how would facebook know that this is the same person until and unless you can identify that person and tell the tell to facebook or the marketing platform that this is a person i have identified that person and when this person is coming to your website do x right so until and unless you have not identified this person facebook cannot know and then the remarketing or anything that is dependent on this particular use case cannot be done and in this case facebook cannot replace cap uh, pixel the face, uh, the facebook capi cannot replace the pixel in the first case facebook capi can replace the pixel in the second case facebook capi cannot replace the pixel until and unless you are able to identify the visitor now how would you do that let's say there is a sign up and the person provides their email address 
and then you send the email address to Facebook and all the other information that you are tracking to Facebook, then Facebook would know that, okay, this is the person that came to your website. I have their details on my server as well. Okay, this is the person to whom you want me to show the ad and then Facebook can do that. So if there is a sign up, if there is a conversion or if there is any identification through which that person has allowed you to know more about them, mostly it can be an email address and you pass that email address to Facebook, then Facebook can identify and this particular use case can also be then delivered wherein Facebook knows who was this person who came to your website last week and now it's on, they are on Facebook and what needs to be done. Okay, I hope I'm able to express clearly what's the use case over here. So in this case, Facebook can identify that person and do the remarketing. So mostly for lower funnel activity, wherein someone has shared their data with you, you can do the retargeting and other use cases that the Facebook pixel was able to provide. Otherwise, you can do only the uh, other thing that is tracking the uh, the activity of that person when Facebook has or the marketing platform has already identified who that person was. Okay. So this is how Facebook Capi in some cases can replace the pixel wherein you send the data directly to facebook.com and in this case in the lower end of the funnel if they have signed up if they have converted you send that data also to facebook and then when they come to facebook facebook would show them the ads or whatever thing you have set in your ads manager whatever campaigns you are running okay so the first use case wherein the person goes from the marketing platform after interacting with an ad you pass the ad ad id or the click id and then to, to the platform and then they would be able to stitch the information through the uh, server side tagging. The second use case, which is from the website to the marketing platform. So for this, you need to have some kind of sign up activity to tell uh, Facebook that this is the person who is who has been to my platform and might come to your platform and then you can do some, you can show them some campaigns. Okay, so here are some considerations when you are going for any server side tagging or uh, Facebook conversion API. So the implementation is not straightforward like a server, like a client side uh, setup that you will do. So it is not like taking a simple JavaScript uh, snippet and installing it on uh, your website for a global snippet or, you know, for the various events. It's not that straightforward. Okay. The second thing is debugging is also not straightforward. So if you are familiar with how to debug the implementation, then there are Facebook pixel debugger, there is Omnibug, wherein you can debug whatever is going from the website to the marketing platform through these debuggers on the client side on the browser. But since this, whatever is happening right now in case of server side tagging is happening on the server, how would you track that until and unless you have the access to it? So if for, for client side tagging, you can debug for any website which has uh, the marketing pixels, right? But in case of uh, your server side tagging, until and unless you have the access to the server, you cannot track what's the information that is getting passed from the server to the marketing platform, okay? The costs. So there can be costs involved. So for example, if you are using, let's say Google Tag Manager, Okay, Google Tag Manager server side tagging. So there is a cost involved. So the number of and that cost is depending on dependent on the number of server calls. So when someone you are sending a ping from your website to Google Tag Manager server container and that from server container is the data is getting sent to the various marketing pixels. So the cost is dependent not only on the incoming request, but also on the outgoing request. So if you have five server server side containers, like five server side destinations, you are sending your server side to, let's say Google ads, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, or any other server side platform that you have. So the cost will be impacted by that because the number of outgoing requests have increased. So it's not free. All right. So consider the cost aspect as well before going for a server side tagging, as long as it's optional. Then there are gray areas. So, uh, you know, if someone has opted out that don't track me, someone has opted out that uh, don't send me marketing information, don't uh, show me any kind of campaigns, but let's say they also signed up for a, for a uh, lead magnet that is there on your website for a coupon or anything that is there on your website and you have now the, their information and there is no way that they can stop you from using that information. And you can say that this is my first party data because you provided me consent and in my privacy policy, which is there in the footer of the website, I have put in that if you are sharing your information, then I can use that for marketing purposes. 
okay so there is a gray area ho over here that you need to be uh, considered about right that you need to be aware of right so there is a gray area and that is in general with the server side tagging because it's kind of a black box so how you are using that information from the server to the end destination the user the client who is there on your website they do not know what what you are doing with that data okay so yeah, that's a short and sweet information on server-side tagging and uh, Facebook conversion API. I have not made it technical. It's just for the business understanding how the tech, uh, like how this particular concept of server-side tagging works. And I hope you understood uh, what I was trying to communicate. If not, then let me know what I can do better. Take care. Bye.